it's time to drink some whiskey. Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to some whiskey tasting nonsense. If you're into your whiskey and specifically your American bourbon whiskies, then you may have noticed over the last, well, couple of months through to the last couple of years, there's been quite a lot of noise made, at least on YouTube, about this. This, of course, being Wild Turkey 101. And to be honest, it's passed me by a little bit. When it first came out, I looked at it, I read up on it, and I thought, I'm not too bothered. In essence, Wild Turkey 101 is the same as the regular everyday bottom of the barrel, pardon the pun, wild turkey, except it's bottled at 101 proof rather than the regular 81 or 50.5% ABV or 40.5% ABV. And to be honest, the regular wild turkey, I can take it or leave it. It's not an offensive drink. It's maybe a bit too easy. I just I find it a little disinteresting, if anything else. But apparently I've been stupid as often is the case, and this allegedly is about the best bargain bottle there is out there. So today we're gonna find that out. First we're gonna taste this, and then we're gonna pitch it against a couple of my other favorites that I've got in to see how it really stands up. Before we crack this open then, here is a quick look at the bottle. I mean, it's, it's a lovely looking thing. It's got a, a turkey on it, obviously, and you know, it just, it looks the part, it looks a little bit more premium. And whilst it isn't the absolute cheapest in their range, because the 81 is, it's still, yeah, pretty affordable by most counts. Right then, let us grab a glass. Glencairn, of course, and then let's get this open. Didn't make a great noise, sadly. But that doesn't matter, what matters is in here. Just gonna pour a small amount to start with because, well, you know, we wanna taste this against a few others and if I drink too much of this, well, it's not really gonna matter, is it? So, now I'm gonna be honest, it's been a long time since I've had that original Wild Turkey 81 and I go as far as to say, certainly by memory, it doesn't the aromas aren't very similar. It's quite, I mean, it may be due to the fact that it's a fresh bottle, but it's definitely not hiding that increased ABV. It is quite sharp on the nose and spice is what's really coming through. Of course, there is some traditional, you know, the corn-derived bourbon sweetness, some caramel, some vanilla, some what-have-yous, but yeah, it's got a really prickly kind of booze and rye peppery spice in it that I just don't really remember from well, the original version. It's um not unappealing, but definitely feels a lot more complex. What I will say though, based on the aroma, it's not standing out to me as a, wow, this is an incredible cheap buy. It's, it's okay. That's all I can really tell you. Um, Let's get into it, shall we? Cheers. First up, it's got good legs on the glass. I don't know if you can be able to see that, but not that it really matters, of course, but there's definitely some viscosity to it. Flavor-wise, okay. I'm starting to understand a bit more, I think, about where some of the hype comes from. I'm not wowed instantly, I'll be honest, again, but it is surprisingly depthy. There's some sweet notes in there. There's a little bit of a citrusy hit. The booze is there, it's prickly. It blends in, again, with that kind of rye pepper spice that was on the nose, and I have to say, actually, after a couple of sips, I think I'm starting to get it. It's, well, it is undoubtedly a step up from the original. If on the original you were starting to think it was a bit tame, a bit disinteresting, a bit whatever. Yeah, to say that this is the same stuff, just not as diluted, well, that is a surprise. And I did some research and some good people out there, including the guys over at the Whiskey Vault, uh, massive channel, I'm sure you're all aware who they are, they did the test. They actually added some water so to equalise the ABVs and got this one down to 40.5. And they said it was. It's the same. It is exactly the same. But... By bottling it that bit stronger, it is a notably, notably different drink. And yeah, it works. It does work because it's got this kind of rich, velvety, caramel, vanilla thing right up front. It's almost too sweet. It's almost verging on kind of, you know, 
whiskey liqueur kind of you know vibes just for a fraction of a second and then it swipes that away you get a little hint of citrus it's not very long though it doesn't kind of elongate throughout the whiskey and then you've got a big smack of booze gets all prickly heat finish it off with some nice rich intense pepper notes from the rye and you've got yourself something that starts off very much at one end of the scale finishes right at the other and you feel like you've been on a journey throughout kind of all of the core bourbon possibilities all in one tiny sip and for me that actually is a very nice experience but is it the best bargain buy So now it's time to put the Wild Turkey 101 head to head against two other of my favorite kind of relatively affordable, easy, accessible, easy to get, easy to buy bourbons. Starting off, Bullet Bourbon. I think this is gonna be a really good comparison because this has got quite a high rye content for a regular, I guess, everyday, relatively cheap or affordable bourbon. And then we're gonna hit it up against the Woodford Reserve, which again, well, not necessarily is rye heavy, but it just has, I don't know, a thing about it. It's just a bit better than maybe the price would indicate. So I think this will give us quite an interesting analysis. And of course, by the end of this, I'm going to be a bit tipsy. And well, it's a Monday night, which is probably not a good thing to admit. But hey, we need to make videos sometime and I'm busy the rest of the week. So let's do it. Two more glasses procured and just for good measure, some water. Partially for my throat, partially for the, well, inebriative qualities of whiskey, and more importantly, to clear the palate so we can kind of accurately taste each of these next to each other. Given that it's open and, to be honest, nearly gone, the Woodford is going first, so that one made a better noise, right? We only need tiny, tiny little drums of these, and actually... Tell I'm going to put these both in at the same time. We're opening two bottles today because this bullet is uh, is unopened, but that is not a problem unless I fail to get into it, of course. Okay, cork sound on the bullet, not as good as the Woodford, but still better than the 101. The cork sound makes no difference to the quality of what it is. It's just my personal audible enjoyment. Put a bit more of the... Uh, Pull it there, let's uh, even things up a bit. So I'm just going to move the bottles out of the way so we can do a little visual inspection. Wild Turkey 101, the Bullet Bourbon and Woodford Reserve. Visually, this is really hard to tell, they're very, very similar colour, but I reckon yeah, the Woodford's the darkest out of the three by a hair, but it's all pretty consistent there. So, aromas. That wild turkey's opened up a bit, as you would expect now. It's been in the glass a moment. Um, still very prickly, though. Really is. That, that heat, that booze heat gets to you on the nose a bit. And the bullet has a bit more of a deep and dark thing going on. A few licorice notes perhaps, even some dark berries. The Woodford, kind of similar on the aroma to the wild turkey, has to be said. It's got a bit more of a, I don't know that I would necessarily have described it as this because it's not a common trait in bourbon, but it's got a little bit of an antiseptic vibe, something that's quite common in heavily peated Scotch whiskey. And it feels dull a little actually, the Woodford compared to the two. Yes, it's an open bottle, it's got a lot gone out of it. Truthfully, it wasn't open all that long ago. It's been had up pretty hard, this one, uh, due to our holiday and people coming over and that sort of thing. So, you know, it is pretty fresh still. And yeah, well, let's just get straight into it. What are the ABVs on the others? Of course, that is important. On the Woodford, we're coming in at 43.2. So that's, mm, what's that, 7.5% lower than the... Uh, than the 101 and then the bullet coming in at 45 so we're down here lowest abv 43 and a bit 45 50 and a half so you know we're stepping up so we're going to come back down to the woodford we'll try that one first 
This is a super easy drinker, Woodford Reserve. It just... A lot of people save it for cocktails. They're not that bothered about it. I get it. I understand why. It's not necessarily the most dynamic, the most interesting. But that slightly clinical, as I say, TCP antiseptic thing that reminds me of some Scotch whiskey that sits in that just helps it elevate um, kind of out of the, let's be frank, boring zone. It's, you know, proper, proper cheap, but branded whiskeys thinking, you know, regular label Jim Beam, Jack Daniels number seven, that sort of thing. They're all quite aggressive, right? When talking about American whiskeys for just sitting there sipping on really Jim Beam's a bit mellower than JD, but yeah, you know, it's not all, they're all pretty much kind of there for mixers only in most people's eyes. The Woodford is kind of that most people go for a mixer, but actually there's a little bit of kind of recognition for it in that it ain't too bad on its own either. And I totally agree with that. It's a hell of a lot smoother than the Jim or the JD, but smoothness at this level can often well, come across as boring, as I've already said, like I get with the normal wild turkey. And again, that note just helps bring that into some kind of life for me. Um, quick swig of water, of course. And then the bullet, which I think in my mind at the moment is sitting there as my firm favourite kind of cheaper entry level whiskey, but Again, it is very, very smooth. It's not as big or as sweet on those kind of traditional bourbon, vanilla and caramel notes. Doesn't feel hugely charred from the barrel either. And again, like with the Woodford Reserve, it's kind of leaning on that antiseptic vibe. The bullet is very much leaning on the rye pepperiness that's in there. It just, again, elevates that one bit of the drink to something that starts off as fairly nondescript, fairly tame, thoroughly enjoyable, of course, but just nothing outrageously brilliant either, into something, yeah, quite quite drinkable, if nothing else. Right then, now I've had those two, back to the question. Is Wild Turkey 101, right now, the best budget bourbon? I think this will tell us the answer. It could be, and I know that's a bit of a cop-out. I'm a bit disappointed that in myself, more than anything else, that I've not got a bottle of the regular Maker's Mark in to throw that up against it because I feel like it maybe has more similarities to that. But that said, against these two right here right now, which one am I going to choose to go away and drink? Well, I like them all, but, you know, on balance and from a kind of, I guess, a whiskey dynamics perspective, I have to say... That Wild Turkey 101 does deliver something just a little bit more than the others. You get that intense, massive sweetness up front, and then it twists and changes and leaves you with something a bit fiery, a bit peppery, a bit... Yeah, it might just be a better all-rounder, and I think that's the takeaway, really. If you want to have a cheap budget bourbon and still experience a raft of all the bourbon flavours... Yes, the Wild Turkey 101 probably is the one to go for. If you like a bit more rye pepperiness and you want to focus on that, but you're not ready for a proper full rye whiskey, the Bullet. If you're looking for one bottle that you can, you know, throw together in a mixer, not that you can't with all of these because you certainly can, but this is probably the more neutral from a mixing perspective, the Woodford. And also have something just to sit there, pour out, enjoy, sat outside while you're waiting for your low and slow barbecue to finish, which is exactly what I did with this bottle last weekend, which is partly why it's so empty. Yeah, it's not a bad shout either. But yeah, hats off, the internet was right. Wild Turkey 101 is a smashing drink. And that really is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you would be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Got to choose another drink now. Cheers.